Hey guys, Zach here. We're running into this force corner, seeing if we can get the whole shot. It looks like we do, so happy with that. Gonna be the first one going into the woods, which was always nice. Um, this is Iron Man, so it's actually about an hour and 45 minutes from our house, which is pretty nice. So we actually drove up the same day that we raced, which we don't have much of anything for camping, so that's pretty nice for us. And dirt really good. It's a lot like ours is back at the house. I have an idea of what it's going to do on pretty much anything, so that's nice. This is actually the last race that I'm going to be riding on the 300 anymore, so we'll be on a, probably a 350 this next coming year. It'll be a little different on a four-stroke, but I think it'll be good. There's Nick. He's sneaking by me. I'm not very comfortable going very fast in these field sections. My bike just doesn't like it. It's not very stable. Sometimes it gets a little crazy. Nice having all these big firms pushed up along the sides. Oh yeah, right there. <laughs> that that shit got a little crazy right there. Probably partially because I was letting off the gas on those whoops. But, uh, we didn't go down like good. They're getting a little bit away from me now, but nothing I can't reel back in the woods. I ride with, race with Nick at OXCR pretty often, so we ride pretty close. We back and forth every once in a while, but it depends. I didn't race in the pro class this year, so. So right up here, me and this other guy get together a little bit. I have a little bit of, about a bike length on him, but he kind of thought he had it, and then a second guy ran over me. So I got a couple um, pictures here, but we'll break it down a little bit while everybody's sneaking by. So the first guy, I think he thought he had the pass, but didn't quite have it. And, uh, and the second guy right here is actually see running over me, which is, yeah, it didn't feel the greatest. His foot peg actually hit me in the elbow. And then he's plucked from running over me. My bike didn't have any tire marks on it because it mainly was off of me, but, yeah, I thought right now my hand was broke. And I had got that foot peg to the back of my elbow. So, that wasn't fun. I... After the race was over, I couldn't bend my elbow. It was all stiffened up and had about a half inch of swelling on it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, my hand wasn't actually broken. I had somehow, I don't know how, but a nerve or something I busted and the top of my hand was all numb and couldn't feel it and that kind of fun stuff. But it's coming back now. It's been a couple weeks though, but it's coming back. And then uh, the elbows, I can bend it now. And uh, yeah, I've patched up the foot peg holes in my elbow, but they're all good. Yeah, but after that, I just, I didn't feel like I, it, I didn't have a reason to push, and I didn't feel like pushing, so I just was out here to more or less just learn because I've not rode much of these whooped out tracks and I just I don't have much experience with them honestly so I'm just trying to learn them a little bit 
this section was a little bit slick, but as long as you were a little loose on the bike, you were good. It was just not very predictable every time, but you could you you could poke your way through it pretty easy. Thought about going for the pass right here, but I didn't want to get soaked. It was pretty cold out there, and uh, yeah, being cold when it's that getting wet when it's that cold would just not be very fun. So. Thought I could get on the gas out of there, but you know, that didn't happen. Some of the whoops down to here were pretty crazy how big they were. I'd say some of them were probably two foot deep how they were. They just Later on, I would ride to the very edges of the track, and that was where the line was. Right through the center, it just did not work. You can tell that I was pushing my those OEM Bark Busters from KTM. The only problem with them is when you do do anything decent and that bark buster bends all the way that zip tie will break sometimes and when that zip tie breaks that bark buster will swing back and hold your front brake or your clutch lever pushed back which from my case it's the front brake lever it was holding it back and dragging it which when you're riding and then all of a sudden your bike grabs a handful of front brake it's a little unpredictable <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to be running those OEM KTM bark, bu bark Busters any longer just because I've had that happen twice now from this race and I'm not, I'm not running them again for that reason. And the hard part is you have to run, you can't just run the Bark Busters where you want the Bark Busters themselves, you have to run them where your levers go too because they're connected to your perch which is a little bit different. I mean, it's, I think they're the most solid bark buster, but we just, that one problem, unless, I mean, put some kind of different zip tie on it, it might work. Man, I feel like crap. trying to just get by these guys. Now that I look back at it, I could have straight shotted through those little saplings and shaved off a little more time and might have got around this first guy, but it would have been a little tight, but yeah, these guys, I think, break away a tiny bit from me just because I wasn't, I wasn't very interested in going very fast on these straight stretches, but getting the head shake and all that fun stuff. Probably doesn't help that I have a lot of hours on this 300 and everything has gotten a little bit loose. Right there, there was a drone flying over me. It was pretty cool. It was about two feet from me, but. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna build a whoop track so that I'll have a little more experience with these breaking, big braking bumps and acceleration bumps and get that all dialed and, on, and I'll be even better for these next races. When I went down there too, when I got tangled up with that guy, Something happened where I lost my rear brakes too, so I had no rear brakes right now, which I ride with no rear brakes for practice sometimes, so I've got a little bit of experience with it in the race before this one. Um, my reservoir cap came loose, so I lost all my fluid, so I got kind of used to running with the no rear brakes. It's 
makes you ride a little different, a little more smooth, and work on just hitting every turn just right. And because really your rear brakes, they can almost hurt you more than help you sometimes because it'll unsettle the bike coming into the corners and just not you. It'll you can not use proper technique and get away with it with using rear brakes sometimes. And if you don't have them to use. Them, I'm not gonna fall into that habit of doing it because I used to do it and now I've worked my way out of it. I seen that line on the left there, but I wasn't exactly lined up. I can't even. This guy came across here, but I wasn't too sure, but I just went with it. I just stayed a little bit further back. I thought we had her on the guy in this Kawasaki, but not quite. This turn was a little slick. I didn't get quite as much drive as I wanted out of that corner, and that guy got around me. There was that line right over there on the right that I wish I would have seen, because if I would have seen that, we would have had probably two passes through there. Which would have helped a lot. Right here, I try a little bit different line, and it works out, because they got tangled up in those little saplings, so got two more there. That little sapling got you in the head if you weren't careful with it. I seen this line to the right up here, but then I seen that little log on the off camera and as it popped down again. Thought I could outbreak it, but not without the rear brake, right? It's too tight. Looking back on this, I should have hit the outside. I could have just carried more momentum and kept the gas on. And that dirt had all the traction you'd ever want, so but we still got around. Watch out! This section was pretty, pretty fun. I this first lap, I was like, oh man, this is gonna get deep. But we ended up going up the hill over there to the left and going along the side, which was a little bit better and never got bad at all. I mean, there's a bunch of bikes in the bottom that got it, but like, there was normally a line open that it never was too bad.
go home back and group and it's just everybody's just slowing each other down and it's just hard. This guy kicks out this hay bale and he's like, oh no, that thing better not come in front of me. I thought about sneaking by him here on the right, but I just want to get punched off into the fence down here. We ended up sneaking around right here, getting a good line, making it clean. This section of dirt was really good. It was pretty loose and powdery, actually. This line I take up here is dumb. Later on, I realized that that right side had a really hard base and wasn't bad at all. It looked like a bottomless mud hole on the right, but it was actually way better than that left line, but is what it is. I've been trying more to not take the same lines as anybody else and trying to come up with new ones that are better, straighter, and carry more momentum for the next section. I've seen that right line and it kind of frustrated me because I would have made these two passes probably and got by those two guys, but oh uh, wait, this is a little tight, but you got it. Seen that line on the left there, and I was a little frustrated that I didn't see it before. This section was pretty fun. It was pretty flowy and the dirt was amazing in it so yeah no brakes the, most of those other turns had a berm on them that you could bank off of but that one didn't have it so a little bit harder That was a fun little natural double right there. It looked really nice and had a little landing on it and everything. Dad was actually able to get um, third and masters, which was pretty good. And I think 160th something overall, which not too bad for certain, I think, row 11, I think is what it is, or something like that, so not too bad, it worked its way all the way up to there. I think Dad would have a good shot at a championship in the Masters 50B. 
Power. Yeah. Whole thing to do the whole series. It'd be a lot of fun, but a lot of money. I'll be trying to get all of my uh, onboards from the season up. I've just been busy with school and getting everything together for getting the next bike and working and all that kind of stuff. Once these next couple weeks, I'll be trying to get a bunch of these videos up, up, uploaded and all that kind of stuff. And I think I have about probably three or four races to get out, so. We'll get those all done and get to see all those. Maybe the last one probably on the two stroke at least for a little while. We'll see. in a good race. I think she's in sixth right now because we've passed a couple of them already. So, she's doing good. Right up here, we're running the opposite direction of the motocross track, and I wasn't expecting that right there. That was a pretty good little drop. Didn't exactly feel the greatest, but it wasn't too bad. These sand whoops were pretty fun. I just wasn't feeling it the very... I just won my day. We'll see. Not exactly happy with everything how it turned out for this day, but there's always the next one. Next one, learn from what we did and come back stronger for the next one. But thanks for uh, sticking in and watching the video. And Mm-hmm. 